also have the filmmakers forum. Exactly. And uh, which I'm looking forward to already because uh, we just concluded the Maliari screening together with uh, Mr. Piolo Pascual himself. He was there. Yes. And sa mga nakamis, of course, we will also be screening uh, Maliari at Diplomat Hotel tomorrow at 7 p.m. So we'll see you there, guys. Yes, so I guess the venue is perfect for the movie itself, right? Because it's the Diplomat Hotel and you're watching Maliari. It's just a, just such a thrilling film. Well, anyway, we will, once again, we welcome you all here at the Amphitheater to our guests, uh, students, and uh, film enthusiasts. Welcome, welcome, everyone. Good afternoon. The sky is already clearing, so I guess we'll get ahead and start it. Yes, and to start with, may we ask everyone to please stand for our prayer. To be free for the public. Yes, and uh, we have right now from the Embassy of, of Australia, uh, she's actually giving a speech later on. And also we would like to acknowledge the embassies of Indonesia, Czech Republic, um, we also have um, Indonesia and India. Right, so uh, totoo nga naman ang ating uh, theme for this year is Building Bridges Beyond Boundaries. So why don't we give Montañosa Film Festival a round of applause for having this endeavor going beyond our borders in the Cordillera region. And speaking of going beyond, beyond borders, our participants for the films and competition this year are all over, from all over the Philippines. Pwede po bang tumayo ang ating mga finalists for our films and competition for MFF? Nandito po sila! Hello! Siyempre, meron tayong uh, do for documentary. We have eight finalists for the narrative. We also have, uh, I know, we have six entries. And for mobile, we have eight. May we ask all our finalists who are here to please stand to be acknowledged? Ayan, o diba? Nagmula pa talaga sila sa iba't ibang palit ng bansa mula Ilocos, Isabela, um, syempre meron din tayo yeah. sa Baguio, and even in the Visayas. And... In short, it's Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. So welcome to Baguio, guys! And please do enjoy. It's our first day actually here. Oh wow! Welcome, welcome to very breezy Baguio. We actually just uh, um, uh, had... Um, coffee kanina, but later on, meron tayong pa-cocktails dyan. So, yes. sana mainitinit pa yung serving. But yeah. Alright, to move forward with this program, may we ask the mall manager of SM City Baguio, Mr. Philip Baisak, for his welcome remarks. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, and film enthusiasts, it is with great pleasure that I welcome you all to the launching of Montañosa Film Festival here at SMCT Baguio. I would like to extend my deepest thanks to our esteemed guests for coming here today. Ms. Era Patricio, Local Film Incentive, Film Philippines Office. Sir Roman Carion, Festival Division, FTCP. Filipining Joyce Bernal, our Grand Jury. Sir Emmanuel De La Cruz, MFF Competition Camp Mentorship Director. And Director Emerson Cuyo, Bureau of Copyright and Related Rights. And Sir Ferdinand John Balanag, Festival Director. And of course, to the whole of SM City Baguio's guests witnessing the, the event today. Today, we are honored to showcase the works of esteemed filmmakers. The Montañosa Film Festival is a testament to the rich culture, heritage, and artistic excellence of the Filipino people in filmmaking. As we embark on this journey, let us not only appreciate the beauty of all the creations of the filmmakers, but also reflect on the stories they tell and the emotions they evoke. Film has the power to transcend boundaries and connect us on a deeper level, and I believe that this film festival will do just that. I would like to extend my heartfelt thanks 
to all the filmmakers, distinguished guests, organizers, and sponsors who made this event possible. Your dedication and passion for film have truly brought this event to life in a magnificent way. I invite all of you to immerse yourselves in the world of filmmaking and to experience the beauty and wonder it has to offer. Thank you all for joining us today, and I hope you enjoy the film festival. Good afternoon. Thank you very much, Mr. Philip. All right. Ms. Beyonce, we also have members of the Cultural Center of the Philippines. And dito po si the other day joining us in different activities. May we ask on stage, Ms. May Caralde, the Division Chief for Film, Broadcast, and New Media for the Cultural Center of the Philippines. And now, uh, may we also uh, call on other members of the panel. Uh, our filmmaker, Dustin Celestino. stage, Ms. Minda Kasagan, our Cultural Arts Officer 3 of the Cultural Center of the Philippines. Alright, in just a short while, we will be having a forum with our esteemed members of the panel. And now, it's time for a message coming from the Second Secretary of the Embassy of Australia in the, in, in the Philippines, Ms. Nicole Gifford. Thank 
you so much, Ms. Nicole, and of course, for the trivia. For the films of Australian Embassy, it will be shown from March 21 to 23 uh, in select hotel venues. You will see the screening schedule on our Facebook page. But before that, allow me to actually introduce all other participating embassies for this year's international films. So let's start with, of course, Embassy of, Embassy of Australia. The British Council. Embassy of Indonesia. Embassy of India. And Embassy of Czech Republic. Thank you so much to all our participating embassies for this year's International Film Festivals. For the schedule, that would be from May 21 to 23, from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. Our participating hotel venues, Baggy Country Club. We also have Grand Shara Bynes Hotel, The Manor, and Le Leone. So please check the schedule, the screening schedule on our Facebook page. That's right, and uh, we have uh, even more exciting events coming until the uh, 24th for the uh, closing of the Montañosa Film Festival. And sa lahat ng mga talagang enthusiastic na manood, uh, mag-join and participate sa iba't ibang mga naging uh, events natin for the past days, right? Yes. Uh, grabe, grabe. And of course, once again, we're welcoming all the uh, participants for the Montañosa Film Fest this year. This is your first day. I hope that you have uh, thick jackets with you because it's going to be so breezy. Anyway, starting now. Starting, starting now, actually. Now. <laughs> the sun is about to set and it's really, really cold. And so, before we move forward, let us first acknowledge the festival founder and festival director of Montañosa Film Festival, Mr. Ferdinand John Balanag. Get it first? He's such, such a busy man, so he's probably somewhere around talking with some important people. Ayan, yeah, yeah, yeah. our director! Okay, Hello, direct. Thank you, direct first. Alright, this time, let's start with our Filmmakers Forum. The way we would do it is we'll be going down to actually do the question and answer. But before that, let's first get to know the members of our panel. Okay. Let's start with Ms. Aira Patricio, the local film incentive, Film Philippine Office of the Film Development Council of the Philippines. Okay, uh, stand up for you to be recognized again. Hello, madam. Can you give one short message, please? Hello, everyone. My name is Aira Patricio. I'm the Project Development Officer of Create Beach Films under the Film Philippines Office of Film Development Council of the Philippines. So later, if you have questions to film incentives, so you can talk to me. So that's all. Hello, everyone. Nice to meet you. Ayan. Hello. Thank you, Ms. Patricio. Now, next we have Festival Division of the FDCP, Mr. Roman Carion. Hello everyone, I'm Roman Carion from uh, Festivals Division. I'm the Project Development Officer, uh, handling the Festivals Division locally. If may mga questions kayo, please let us know. Thank you. Yes. Now, for our third member, let's have... Mr. Emmanuel de la Cruz, the MFF Competition Camp and Mentorship Director. Hello, hindi na ako tatayo kasi nakikita nyo naman ako. Uh, in behalf of Director D, Mon, and the rest of the festival team, and also the mentors uh, in the last four years, though I'm also representing them. Uh, actually, one of them is here, Dean Marshall. Can you please stand up? So he's one of our mentors, and he also became one of our jury uh, in 2022, uh, together with Eric Matty, John Arcelia, Martika, Escobar. Um, ang aking short message ay this forum is really for the filmmakers and uh, that's why we have a panel that can truly help you push uh, your films towards the next step. No? And we have incentives, we have uh, intellectual property rights, and we have the government uh, agencies of content. And I just hope that you make the most of it to network uh, even kayo Shem, si Clint, you know from the previous batches, si Mark uh, Go, um, 
lahat kayo no, no, you, you should continue your, your filmmaking by actually networking and collaborating uh, with the embassies also from Australia who, who just gave us a brilliant idea for a feature film you know maybe we should start developing Manila men already right uh, because she will fund us <laughs> I hope so but uh, again uh, we just came from actually from the picnic no in Grand Sierra Pines and it was such a wonderful time to rediscover again you know our passion why the reason why we're doing this Miss Maker Aldi just said you know why make films just for money you know <laughs> so parang we're back to that you know let's let's try to remember why, why why we're trying to make films and why we're trying to push forward for films uh, that represents our culture. So thank you for having us as uh, SM Baguio and uh, we just had a very successful Maliari screening and Q&A uh, attended by Mr. Piolo Pascual uh, himself who's very supportive of our festival. So I guess we'll see him more and more in the next few years, diba? To the joy of Miss, Miss Shem here uh, from Batch 2. So thank you and see you later also in the screening of the films. Yeah. Thank you. And also, apart from Dean Marshall, we also have here Jet Leiko. Part of, of course, I, I forgot to mention Jet Leiko, our current mentor in the beautiful, exciting, and most uh, much-awaited documentary section. All right. Thank you, Derek M1. Our next member of the panel, Judy, or member of our panel, sorry. We have, we have Director Emerson. Kuyo of the IPO Philippines Bureau of Copyright and Related Rights. Very important topic, right? So uh, let's welcome Director Emerson. Naimbag na malam kata kay Amin. Good afternoon, everyone. It's always a pleasure to be coming back to Baguio. I'm actually a graduate of UP Baguio two decades ago. So it's good to be back here and uh, to discuss perhaps about uh, intellectual property rights uh, for audiovisual to, the, to you or to answer any questions that you have on intellectual property rights. Thank you. Thank you. Well, looking forward uh, already to the questions we're going to be raising for Direct Emerson. Now, let's welcome another member of the panel, we have Ms. May Caralde, the Division Chief of Film, Broadcast, and New Media of the CCP. Uh, magandang hapon sa lahat. Good evening, everyone. Um, in behalf of the Cultural Center of the Philippines, ang Centrong Pangkultura ng Pilipinas, para sa Pilipino, um, we are here um, at the Montañosa Film Festival to bring several programs. Um, dalawa kami na magkukwento tungkol doon, pero very briefly, um, we are here to bring Cine Icons. Um, Cine I CCP Cine Icons is a film program that promotes the works of our national artists. Tomorrow ay ipapalabas po um, Anak, um, starring Vilma Santos, written by Ricky Lee. And um, in the evening, uh, that's at the SLU Senior High School, and then um, in the evening, it's going to be at the Rose Garden, Decada 70, wow. again by, uh, starred by Vilma Santos, directed by uh, Chito Ronyo. Um, marami po kaming, that, mamaya pong gabi ay may uh, Fright Night, CCP Fright Night, um, featuring the film Diplomat Hotel at the Diplomat Hotel. Tomorrow will be Kanskos. Um, yun, um, sa bahagi po ng CCP, um, May mga filmmakers dito, siguro ang role namin is to promote our programs aside from that. Um, April 30 po, ang um, gawad at tipo para sa pelikula at video, we're, we're accepting entries up until April 30. Four categories po, experimental, documentary, animation, short feature, yeah, narrative. Um, 36th year, mas matanda pa po sa Cinemalaya. Ayon. Um, yeah, we're here to answer queries as well. And of course, natutuwa po kami na nandito kami kasi we're also looking for films to curate for the upcoming Cinemalaya Film Festival on August 2 to 11. It's the 20th of Cinemalaya. We're looking for films for our exhibition program. No? Yes. Thank you so much, Ms. May. This is not actually their first time. 
for MFF. They've been supporting MFF, MFF since we started. Our next member is, of course, Yes. While well, waiting for the slide, well, don't sa nabaget ni uh, ni Madam Karina yung ana ah dekada sa senta sa mga funny little hati bautisa jan. It will be a different experience watching that at the Rose Garden tomorrow. Yes. Okay. Our next member. Next member of the panel is. All right. We have Dustin Celestino, one of our filmmakers. Hello, Dustin. Hello, good afternoon. Um, yeah, I'm Dustin Celestino, and I'm here as part of Lakbay Cine, uh, our, pro, our CCP program. Ayon, nandito po para maki, makisali. And I'd like to thank the Montañosa Film Festival for inviting us and for letting us, you know, for inviting us to these events and, you know, to meet all of you. And we're looking forward to your questions. Thank you so much. Thank you, Direct Dustin. All right, our last member of our um, panel is, of course, the Cultural Arts Officer 3 of the Cultural Center of the Philippines, Ms. Minda Kasaga, na umiikot po sa iba't ibang school since yesterday. Ms. Minda. <laughs> Hello, magandang magandang hapon. Good afternoon to everyone. Um, maybe Ms. May has mentioned about the newly um, implemented project, film program of the CCP, yung Cine Icons. Um, maybe I can somehow uh, tell you about the Lakbay Cine, CCP Lakbay Cine. In the late 90s, um, meron na ang Lakbay Cine, saksi, isa si Eman doon. Uh, and we are now reviving it since last year because of the closure of the main building, of the CCP main building. It's now under rehabilitation. Pinapalakas, pinapatibay ang istruktura na ngayon ay 54 years old na. So, uh, dahil doon, it's a blessing in disguise na napipilitan, hindi naman ipipilitan, pero naghahanap. Uh, we're still looking for more venues, more platforms, uh, for us to be able to promote and distribute yung mga pelikula from Cinemalaya and Gawad Alternatibo. And one of them, minention ni Direct Dustin Celestino, his film, Ang Duyan ng Magiting, ay isa sa mga pelikula ng Cinemalaya last year. So, for our esteemed member of the uh, panel. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Yes, so, ang ganda anyone? pala ng view dito. Actually, ang ganda. Mamaya, yeah. magiging sunset na yan. Picturesque. So. Okay. Anyone from our finalists? Nako. Sige, unahin natin si Shem. One of the finalists of last year. Shem, andito ka ba? Ayun. Ayun. O, nag-grace ka. Nakita ko yun. <laughs> Hello, good afternoon. Siyempre, uunahin namin yung ano, incentives and grants. Okay. From the from mom from FDC people. Um, how could we? Ano pa yung mga programs na current available ngayon na pwede po namin applyan or yung yearly programs po? Hello. And to answer the question po, um, Great Weed Films has two cycles every year po. So currently, last week we just closed the cycle one, which is be open from February to March. So, for those who wants to apply this year, we have Cycle 2 on August to September. So, the particular programs that we cater, we have development and production and post-production. So, those are the three types of um, film, film process or film types or film programs that we have. So, from development, those filmmakers who have their scripts, who wants to further develop their scripts and needs a support in completing your script, we have development program which we gave up to 300,000 pesos for developing the program. And for, for production, we have two types. We have small budget production and we have large budget production. From small budget production, we gave a maximum amount of 1 million pesos for those projects who has 15 million below. And for large budget production, we gave 3 million to 5 million pesos for those projects who has higher than 15 million budget for their production. So more likely those mainstream who wants to, to give or to produce a big film production. And last also we have post-production budget, which we gave 
um, actually it's a good news for everyone because recently or this year we we increased the amount of post-production budget up to 500,000 pesos for those uh, need additional support in their post-production budget we gave up to 500,000 pesos for those who has at least 500,000 budget then sa kanilang post-production so yeah those are the programs that we offer in Create Beach Film so hopefully those Filipino filmmakers who are interested to apply in FTCP and if you have other questions just let me know thank you wow Alam lang kayo mga amount. So, this just goes to show that ang paggawa talaga ng pelikula ay napakamahal. But, uh, you know, at the end, it's all worth it naman. Kasi, ito nyo naman, feature sa iba't ibang film fest. And if not, why not? Baka may um, potential pa even going abroad, right? So, um, uh, we have uh, some questions here, queries. Uh, why, why don't we ask uh, something about copyrights or uh, intellectual property? Sino gusto magtanong dyan? Oh, sige, ako na. Okay. <laughs> Go, Kaiser! <laughs> okay, so this is just a no-brainer question, but uh, give give us the basics of uh, applying for the copyright, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So, magandang hapon po ulit. Uh, hapon, from sir. the Intellectual Property Office of the Philippines, we cover all types of intellectual property or any product of the human mind, no? So, nandiyan yung uh, related to filmmaking, baka you have a particular process or a particular product related to filmmaking na invention ang character. So, sa amin din po nag apply ng patent or util utility model. Now, if you want taglines, for example, or even your marks or logos, uh, then sa amin po nag apply under the Bureau of Trademark. Uh, and of course, ang copyright is protected from the moment of creation, but uh, very specific for audiovisual works dahil madaming inputs yan, you need to have clarity as to who has the copyright over a film or a cinematographic work. So that's the value actually of uh, registering your uh, film or your cinematographic work uh, to us or the National Library. Madali lang po, uh, you just uh, attach the film and then uh, you fill out the form available in our website at www.ipofil.gov.ph and that's easy. Titignan namin kung kompleto, malinaw ba yung sinabit nyo and then uh, after that, we issue you the statement of account, you pay, uh, we register, then you get also your certificates, uh, certificate of registration online. Uh, ang most recent that registered with us is of course uh, yung Jesuits for uh, Gombursa. See. Such an excellent film, diba? And sir, uh, gaano po katagal yung duration nitong uh, copyright uh, or patent? Or, uh... Uh, for patent, medyo matagal-tagal because uh, there are certain requirements uh, under the law na dapat hindi siya ma-divulge, hindi siya maging publicly available yung invention over a certain period of time. But for copyright, copyright na lang, uh, sasabihin ko, our current turnaround time, from application to your receipt of the copyright registration is 1.4 days. Wow, that's fast. That's fast. <laughs> but sir, sorry, one, one follow-up question. Ano yung pinaka -issue, common issues po na na-encounter ng mga filmmakers natin under your division po? I think uh, ang na-encounter ng ating filmmakers again is yung Sino ba ang may copyright over film film production or cinematographic uh, purposes? Kasi collective work ang uh, mga sine. Uh, so you have creative inputs like nandyan yung script, nandyan yung musical, uh, uh, yung theme niya, musical scoring, etc. So madaming inputs yan. Uh, ang masasabi ko dyan is that Separate from the individual inputs, may copyright yon, may copyright yung script, may copyright yung book kung saan binasa yung film, may copyright then yung musical composition, and may copyright separately over the film. 
So apat po kaagad yan uh, doon sa simpleng uh, sitwasyon natin na yun. Apat yung copyright, musical score, the script or the book, uh, and whatever. Kung may costume design pa yan, there's copyright also over the costume design. Pero sa film, meron din yan. Who owns, for purposes of exhibition, who owns the copyright or who exercises the copyright over a film, it's the producer. In the absence of an agreement between and among the copyright holders. Actually, grabe. Okay. Yun pa lang, ang dami na, no? I think isang webinar to. Oo nga. <laughs> ah, talaga, nakinig talaga ako doon. <laughs> diba? Pero may gusto kong follow up, pero siguro later. <laughs> yeah. Anyone? So may gusto tanong, yes, we have one filmmaker here. What's your name, sir? And what's your question? Hello po, I'm Christian. I'm a Baguio citizen, not a filmmaker. Uh, last, just last week, uh, Mr. Charlson Ong, uh, nandito po siya for uh, for yeah for pen uh, ganap sa ano, sa UP Baguio. Uh, Nag-ask po ng isa, yung isa ng question regarding uh, Baguio bilang isang topic or background ng ano ng ng writing. Kasi parang karamihan ng mga ano lahat ng mga uh, karamihan ng mga literature, maraming mga naka ano dito may background ay Baguio or topic ay Baguio. Ang tanong ko po, paano po siya nagka-transcend sa film? Uh, parang, bakit kaya nagiging, uh, ano yung charm ng Baguio sa filmmaking? Bakit siya yung pinipili? Tapos pangalawa, dahil nga marami ng masyadong films na related sa Baguio, ano pa yung mga pwedeng themes na pwedeng explore pa ng mga filmmakers, ng mga writers, Regarding Baguio or the whole Cordillera po. Yun lang po. Probably we can ask our filmmaker, Mr. Dustin, if you could share your insights. Uh, isang malaking dahilan siguro no, kung bakit madaming um, writers ang Baguio mismo. And also madaming writers na nakarating dito. Eh kasi yung isa sa mga longest running literature workshops dito nagaganap, yung UP Baguio. <laughs> uh, yung UP... UP Writers, National Writers Workshop. So, um, isang malaking tulong yun para sa mga nakakarating dito kasi marami sa kanila nakikilala nila yung mga magiging editors nila later on or yung magbibigay ng feedback sa mga trabaho nila. And it's also one of the few workshops that accept um, early drafts of a screenplay. Kaya filmmakers din yung, may ilang filmmakers din na naiingan yung mag- Baguio Workshop. Kasi nga, hindi naman available ang screenwriting workshop dun sa mga ibang literature workshops natin. So that's what one thing that makes um, the Baguio Workshop unique. And another thing, um, malayo siya siguro sa kabihas yung ano, sa kung sa nakasanayan ng mga minilinyo. Kasi when you are taken out of your environment, you get to reflect on it more. So kung hindi man tungkol sa Baguio ang sinusulat nila, nagpupunta sila dito para makapag, mag, mag, makapagsulat um, tungkol sa Maynila from a perspective that is that they're not used to. Kasi makikita mo lang naman talaga yung karakter ng tinitiran mo pag, hindi, pag wala ka dun. Um, I can uh, recall an experience I had when I attended the Dumaguete workshop naman na... Nung nasa Manila ako, wala akong masyadong maisip isulat tungkol sa Manila. Pero the moment I go to Dumaguete and realize how um, different those places are, not only was I able to write about Manila, I was also inspired to write about Dumaguete. In fact, yung batch namin um, ng Dumaguete workshoppers yung nag-introduce ng folio. Kasi we were so inspired to, to write about Dumaguete na gumawa kami ng folio and after our batch all all batches ng Siliman workshop requirement na sa kanila yung folio na yun. And yun din siguro yung isa suggest ko sa editions ng mga workshops dito sa Baguio um, or yung mga festivals pag nag-invite tayo ng mga tao i-challenge natin silang gumawa ng one minute or three minute film about the place. Para ba diba, para ano maging um, fellowship yung experience natin of the location. 
Kasi yun yung naranasan namin before nung gumawa kami ng literary folio about Dumaguete. Na sana sa Baguio meron din tayong anthology of you know, one to three minute short films tungkol sa location kasi madaming iconic places din dito. Ayun, yun lang naman. Tama naman. I think uh, yung uh, literary workshop that they're pertaining to is the UP Baguio Cordillera Writing Workshop or Creative Workshop and also the Likhaan of the uh, Creative Writing Institute of UP Diliman which is held here in Baguio City I think annually. So yeah, if you guys are curious about those events, you can just uh, follow their Facebook pages. Exactly. Yeah. Pero isa lang doon kasi um, the, the, uh, Direct Dustin mentioned about yung one minute or film kapag may mga workshop here. Baka Direct Eman can share about what happened during the MFF Film Camp last December. Speaking of, some of the filmmakers who are here now also joined our film camp last December. And we've been doing the film camp since the, the first year but for the first time we had it on site. Finally, it's a real camp, may bonfire. <laughs> So we tasked them to do a 100 second film uh, and I think they made it very successfully. They were juried and some of them won uh, awards for that. And we were actually showing it, right? We're showing the 100 second films uh, during the Montañosa Film Festival as well. Um, the, the challenge there was that they were doing a film within the timeline of being in the camp where they have like five workshops <laughs> so wala silang masyadong personal time pero they still found a way of some of them made horror films while everybody was asleep or sleeping in the quarters and they were shooting in the hallways and that film actually won and you know some of them made films out of their cell phone you know the the videos they've shot in the past year or the the photos you know and uh, some the the grand prize is actually uh, finalist, diba? Uh, in the mobile section, he only shot uh, one tree. Diba? Puno ng this, bagyo. Oh, isang puno. Pine isang puno, pine tree, pabaliktad. And he won the grand prize. So, so you know, magandang ano, experience for the film. As Dawn uh, from Davao, she won uh, one of the prizes, right? And um, ayan, she also edited it. So, yun yung challenge, no? In the film camp. Wala ka naman talagang totoong filmmaking team. So, you have to rely on your own cell phone, for your camera, then you're, you edit within your apps. So, it becomes a very dynamic, a very immediate, very uh, urgent kind of film. Yes, Dustin, we, we definitely want to continue uh, making microfilms. Uh, not just during the film camps, but, you know, it really encouraging it. Uh, in the Montañosa and actually si Direct Ferdi we had a program also we wanted to do uh, Elida's project uh, uh, it's called uh, A Baguio Diary I think uh, so but we also want to do that uh, maybe in the next camp uh, and just to answer your question no, about Baguio because Baguio uh, historically has been the place to go for a lot of the studios uh, I think even in the earliest years uh, of filmmaking because definitely this is like the coldest part of <laughs> the country and a lot of them uh, have seen this as a very conducive place not just to make films but to actually generate you know ideas I guess and uh, create uh, you know um, uh, collaborations and you know um, attend uh, different uh, programs and laboratories diba? so parang uh, it's also that Baguio is a poetic place in our heads, you know, especially to those who have been to Baguio when they were kids. Uh, I myself, I'm from Cagayan, from Apari, but I always remember trips to Baguio as something very colorful, meaningful, eventful. Because excited ka na, isusuot mo na yung mga sweater mo, yung mga ukay mo na may mga fur, masusuot mo na. Punta <laughs> ka ng Baguio. So, Baguio is a place in our heads and we, we want to dignify, we want to, to create that images on the screen. And I think, tama siya eh, hindi pa naman maximize yung pwedeng gawin sa Baguio. Especially if it's historical and cultural significance. A lot of the stories of our indigenous people and our, our native tribes in Baguio have, haven't even been scratched on the surface. Marami talagang, like Makling Dulag has only been seen uh, on stage. We haven't seen it on film. So, there. 
Make one. Make that film. Thank you, yes. Rick Ewan. I guess, uh, in short, ang sarap i-romanticize ng buhay sa Baguio. Kahit tourist or local ka, di ba parang naglalakad ka lang sa session, wow, feeling uh, main character ka na. But, uh, uh, <laughs> di ba that's right, feeling main character tayo dito sa Baguio. So, speaking of main character, ang ating our uh, participant from Davao would like to ask some questions. Um, Volunteer and volunteer. Uh, so good afternoon. <laughs> volunteer. <laughs> so good afternoon po sa lahat. So uh, before I ask some uh, question po, I would just like to uh, say na as someone from Davao, we really appreciated Baguio kasi nga po we have um, yung sabi nga ni Direct Dustin na when you're out of the place where you're used to, mas na-realize mo kung Ma, ano yung mga bagay talaga na nandun, na di mo nakikita on your everyday life kasi nga nagiging routine na siya and here in Baguio, we really appreciate the culture of the people na how deeply rooted everyone is to their roots na maging sila na rin nagiging lifestyle na nila and they themselves are the jewels of this uh, city so we, we we realize na hindi talaga kami mapapagod dito sa Baguio kasi yung mga tao pa lang. Kasi parang it's very different from where we came from and the culture is different and how everyone is like, uh, paano nila to, nino nurture and hindi lang nila ginagawang something to be celebrated once a year. And my question po is, in terms of arts, although, uh, sorry, uh, if uh, my, my culture naman talaga ang bawat lugar, but how can we propagate it? And how can we, uh, paano po natin mak ma makakampaign with other people, even with uh, uh, yung sa mga kasama natin, or, or let's say just, um, the people in our city, in our community, to mo, to be more immersed in their culture because of how uh, liberated we are and how we are very much, uh, parang mas nalalamo na tayo ng ibang kultura, especially Western culture. I think Ms. May from CCP can answer. Now, we're talking about Orientalism now. <laughs> okay po, yes, Ms. May. Yes. Um, siguro ang pinakasimpleng sagot dyan um, ay maglakbay tayo. Um, sometimes, tama si Dustin, eh, we have to leave our place uh, to find ourselves. Um, kaya kami sa CCP dahil wala kaming bahay. <laughs> wala yung building namin. Pero it's a blessing in disguise, ha? Yung nawalan kami, ah, hindi mo nawala. Under renovation yung uh, Centro Pangkultura ng Pilipinas, mas na, nung umalis kami sa brutalist na arkitektura, <laughs> sa structure, parang as cultural workers, parang ano eh, may, may parang nag-reflect kami na parang, oh nga no, ba't tayo nakakulong sa kahon na yun? Eh ang kultura ay dapat, dapat kasama ng mga tao. Um, for those who are doing the, uh, sino dito ang com arts or sino dito ang anthropologist uh, studying anthropology or pop culture, if you've read Raymond Williams, di ba? We have to make culture ordinary. Hindi kailangan ang kultura ay nasa pedestal or nasa isang brutalist na kusali tulad ng CCP, although I'm from the CCP. Um, yun yung gusto nating baggain, no? Kailangan ang kultura ay niyayakap ng mga tao kung saan ito galing, no? At uh, ang ganda sa Pilipinas dahil we are so diverse and that is our strength. No? Our differences, however painful some of the, them may be, is our strength. Um, at yung mga tagpo na ganito, naglakbay kami at ang paglalakbay may pagtatagpo, hindi ba? At sa pagtatagpo na yan, new stories, new friends, kami we're looking for pasalubong, not the, not the ubi jam and the strawberry jam. From the CCP, we're looking for pasalubong films that we want to program 
ilalakbay din namin ang mga pelikula ninyo. Kaya yung sinasabi ni Emma na short shorts, yung micro uh, shorts, and your films, you want to watch it. Kasi ang experience namin sa paglalakbay, no? Um, ano eh, sabi ng mga sudyante, iba, iba palang klase, no? Uh, marami pala tayong magkagandang pelikula, hindi lang mga nasa Netflix, hindi lang yung Korean. Sabi namin, ay oo. Um, at para mas dumami pa, kailangan mas dumami ang katulad nila na manonood ng pelikula. So, uh, magtutulungan tayo to develop our audiences and hence, we develop our culture. Hindi tigil ang kultura, ito ay Uh, di ba? Yumayabong, no? At dahil yon sa patag pagtatagpo, dahil din sa paglalakbay, pinaplag talaga ang lakbay okay, sige. <laughs> very, I'm very poetic. I love that. Okay po. Can I just add? Nandito na ba si Francis Galut? Nandito na ba? Wala pa? From Isabela. Kasi si, si na Francis, sila yung pumunta sa film camp because the filmmaker from Isabela, si Reniel, couldn't make it because of his thesis. So, ang pinadala niya yung mga teachers from their school in Isabela. And you know what they did actually this month, okay? So, after film camp namin in December, they started making small labs with their students to make 100-second uh, films, right? And now, he sends me two posters of around 20-plus films, so they got 40 entries now, of three-minute films from the school. At school the screen? In SM uh, Isabela, Kawayan. Uh, and they call it Sinaglaya. So they have oh. their, in just the span of two to three months, they have their own festival. They got SM to screen these three minute films because he was just inspired by the program that they had during the Montañosa film camp. And he says he will start actually sending feelers to the other schools and make it an inter-school competition of micro minute, uh, micro three minute films. Wow. So there's actually films there which will be uh, pasalubong because um, they've been ignited. So I guess that's the idea of Montañosa. That's the next place we will invade. <laughs> yes, Ilocandia, Ilocandia Region 2, Cagayan. Please. Direct, perhaps we can uh, shout out the school. Ano school po ba nagaling ito? Okay. But kudos to SM City Kawayan for also uh, collaborating with the school and with this endeavor, supporting that endeavor. Kita mo nga naman ang uh, power ng isang film festival at nag-ignite tayo, nag-inspire sa iba't ibang panig ng bansa. Yes. And syempre going back, kasi sinabi kayo ni Miss May, ang powerful nun eh. Make culture ordinary. Wow. Hindi siya laging naririnig, minsan maguguloan ka na lang, but sobrang tama yun. Yes. Thank you so much for, for that, Miss May. And sa mga na... Yes, Ma if I may yes Ms. May. Yes, Ms. May. Kasi mo, we just said, um, Bakang Bading, kumuha tayo ng film about a gay kid. Kasi mainstream cinema, we were all writers for Star Cinema, remember? Ni Chico, Moira Lang, uh, Jay Castro, the two spaces, me. Uh, I was also part of core group of Star Cinema. Sinulat namin yung mga pelikula na hindi gagawin ng Star City. E sabi namin, kuha tayo ng kwento ng isang ba, yung ba din. Uh, who also represents society, how we treat them, diba? and how they, they, they are seen by, by, you know, by our culture and by our uh, prejudices. And then Jade wrote Endo, you know, and we co-wrote it with him. And he said, um, this is my State of the Nation address. So this film is the state of what uh, contractual, uh, contractualized writers are uh, experiencing. So what I'm saying is, but the direction also is for you to tell the most honest story. That I love that direct. And also, I uh, just interject. Ang pelikula naman hindi lang uh, feature ang feature ng kultura, hindi ba? Pero hindi naman yung mga yun, mga prejudices and mga problema ng ating society. So that's really nice. Okay. May, uh, I think someone's gonna talk. At ko na lang din no, sa, no, sa creation ng Sigma Tech sa Baguio. Uh, siguro, ano, mas powerful ko yung uh, endorsement or proposal ko is magagal ko na LG News. Ayan po, uh, upon checking din po yung uh, sa part din ako, isa ko na din po naman parang, ayan, uh, this ayun po. Uh, mas okay po na ang LG News po ang masasend ang proposal or endorsement. And then we will check po ay pag-uusapan din din. Parang naaagoy ko ng Sigma Tech. Pag-check po yung fax nyo na 9AM po. Ayan po. 
Okay, okay, sir. Make questions, Ayesha. Uh, yes, kay at isang volunteer po. Ayan, directed daw po kay uh, sa ating copyright uh, Okay. Regarding copyright po, marami na pong nakikita ng film po sa mga niyo sa film na magagawa. Tapos sa uh, marami-rami po na napataka po ako. Ano po yung nakukonsider po na inspired po tapos dangerous po? Maybe the guy, ma. Sir, the direct or person, plagiarized concept. Can can that actually be considered in the film? Ah, siguro to clarification mo na on certain concepts. Ang punishable by law is copyright infringement, which is copying the work of another or exercising any of the rights ng copyright holder without permission. Uh, plagiarism kasi is more a social construct, is a social concept. Kaya kadalasan ang plagiarism is nasa university setting, okay. sa school, or sa profession. So, that being said, uh, there is a very thin line actually between uh, inspiration and copying. Ang uh, ating batas on copyright provides na bawal ang pagkopya ng work or even portions of the work. Okay? Pero yung batas din natin sinasabi that ideas are not protected. So the concept, for example, lagi kong example dito, of the storyline, for example, of a poor boy falling in love with a rich girl, walang may-ari nun. Walang nagmamay-ari nun because that's a concept. So a concept cannot be copyrighted. No one can own it. So, but the specific expression will have to be subjected to copyright protection. So it's the expression. The concept, how do you express it? Iba-iba yan eh. So diba, pwedeng sa, sa photo na lang, a certain concept, pwede iba-iba yung pagkaka-express. So, copyright protects the creative expression, not the idea. Sir, how about those iconic lines? Uh, mga sikat talaga ang kata na ginaan. Uh, I mean, linya, mga dialogue, ganyan, na ginagawang parody, ganyan. Um, ano po yung uh, exemption? May exemption po ba doon? <coughs> okay. Making quotations is actually an exception to copyright uh, protection. No? Uh, protected ba yan yung specific uh, lines, kung taglines, or dialogues uh, on its own may be used. No? Uh, may be used, may be quoted uh, by people without uh, actually breaking uh, or running afoul of our copyright. Pero kung yun ay na-feature mismo sa pelikula, uh, doon na po ba papasok yung copyright mismo sa quotation na parang source doon sa screenplay? Kasi parang na-source sila doon. But not in the film itself. <laughs> Ini-imagine ko pa what the actual situation is. But quotation is actually, uh, general principle, ang pag-quote is an exception to copyright. Uh, under what conditions nandun yun uh, sa ating copyright law uh, I, I don't see uh, any reason why that should so, not so it's still possible to reference another work within your work as long as there's uh, yes, uh, the condition is uh, you you only use especially for making quotations or for uh, educational purposes or for illustration purposes you can actually quote no uh, but you only use such part of the original work as necessary to for the function or for the intention that you that you have right but the paper general principle in copyright uh, is parody is accepted parody and uh, yes satire satire uh, uh, parody and satire kasi may 
the recent issue dyan, on parody daw siya. So, uh, parody is also accepted uh, as uh, fair use, as an exception to copyright, uh, because comments, criticisms, uh, are fair use purposes. Uh, however, let me caution lang, no? uh, there is a very thin line with, uh, kailangan observe mo yung conditions for parody. When we say parody legally, you are supposed to be commenting or making light of the original work. So may parody work, you make a criticism out of the work. What if you use a work to comment on social life, on political life? That's not parody anymore because hindi nga na meet yung condition that you should be commenting or criticizing the parodied work. Okay? So, very thin line. Kasi akala natin na if you just make light, gagawin mo to comment on but great apps, for example, uh, parody na kaagad siya. No. Uh, parody, uh, under uh, our legal uh, precedents, uh, dapat yan should be commenting on the work. On the parodied work. I hope that's very clear that uh, may itatagdag si uh, uh, Justin. Add ko lang, no, like, yung concept ng, yung very idea of copying ideas and plagiarism. Yung, wala tayong legal protection, dun, ethical protection, and kumbaga it's a, it's a nag-read upon, upon among writers na unwritten rule yan, na if, if I share a concept with you, sana hindi mo gayahin. But there is nothing that protects you from your concept being stolen or copied. In fact, may mga waiver kang pipirmahan bago ka mag-pitch sa mga studio. Like, they might have similar or it also protects them. Pag maganda yung concept mo pero hindi ka magaling magsulat, papasulat nila sa iba yun. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing to protect you and you, you've actually signed a waiver to protect them just to be able to pitch there. So what I usually tell writers is what yung concept ko yung idea may protect mo. Kasi ang, ang dal, ano siya eh, hindi mo siya mapoprotect. Pwede siyang nakawin sa'yo. So you have to be more than your concept. Na kahit agawin mo to, kahit, kahit gawin mo tong concept na ginawa ko, hindi mo yan magagawa in the way that I'm able to. That's actually what's going to be your competitive advantage. Kahit kunin mo tong concept na to, pag pinasulat mo yan sa mas mura mong writer, hindi yan magagawa. Kaya kailangan ako yung i-hire mo. It's that particular level of competence that will protect you and your concept. Otherwise, if you have good concepts but not good writing, they'll just take your concept and give it to a superior writer. Ayan. Sabi nga ng uh, isa kong uh, mabuting friend na writer din, uh, ang ideas daw or concepts is currency dito sa industry yung ito. So, kailangan mong protektahan ng mga ideas talaga. Diba? Okay, may question tayo dito. Alright, we have here one question. Uh, thank you, Sir Justin, dun sa comment pertaining sa sentiments ng original filmmaker. So this is my question. My question is, is there already a law that will lobby the needs of filmmakers who reach the higher level? I, I started with Montañosa. Basically, we envy Baguio City because the city funds yung ginawa nila sir Eman nila Ferdy so kung ba para nagcreate ng spark but this is the question meron bang ngayon na kini create na law similar to uh, the MSMB law the creative law that speed up the process kasi yung problema namin regional filmmaker kung konti ang sponsor namin we would love to go for the higher like Cinemalaya Pero nakaka-nervyos pag yung inisip mong budget, 4.5, pumunta ka sa film parade, naging 10.8, then pupunta ka sa LGU, wala man lang sila maibigay sa'yo. Ang tanong, is there a law that will mandate us to give you funds? Eh, ang pinupromote namin, local livelihood, local culture, local story. Ang tanong sa amin, they need justification that there is a law 
for them to create a a law in such a way that we will be allocated fund. Kasi recently, one of my colleagues here, si Julius, nabigyan ng opportunity with Sinamalaya. We would like to make it big. Fortunately, the local government unit ng multiple areas, wala silang basihan na law na mag-allocate ng fund. Instead, mamumoblema siya ngayon sa kakatayang baboy. Kasi there's a cultural thing that comes with it. Kailangan ang papakainin ng community. It's true, there's a community is going to watch the film. But unfortunately, our local government unit has no basis para malang mag-create ng pondo para sa kakainin ng community. Kasi nga naman, first time na may local filmmaker na nandun na sa taas, gagawa ng film, may international participation, pero hindi kasama sa budget. Now we're left with a situation na wala ka rin support sa local government. Now, if we look for overseas grant, they will dictate over our creative uh, mandate ba? Nang gusto namin artista local, gusto namin i-build up local. How can we build up the local if our foreign producers wants na foreigner ang artist? It cuts our creativity na how will we pay back yung utang na loob namin sa mga local creators when we were starting. In my case, uh, paano ko babayaran yung mga nagpahirap ng mga music nila, yung talent nila, ngayon na nasa taas na kami. So, the question here is, will there be a possibility that there will be a law that will help us filmmaker get a reference to get LGU support economically rather than kukuha kami na mag-option kami for overseas funding that we are forced to put people who are not exactly related to the culture na matidisplace eh, yung, yung talagang gusto namin palabasin. So it's the question of to the rest of the panel, can you help us create this law so we can use it as a reference to get LGU support? Thank you. Right. Uh, thank you. Sino po pwede yung sumagot? Uh, I, I don't know if you're referring to kanina.